Welcome everybody. Um, if this is your first time at a 530 Media Project workshop, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Michelle Rogers. I'm a content editor at the Record Searchlight. And as part of my job, I do social media and community engagement, and I helped launch the 530 Media Project about a year ago. We partner here with Pacific Sky, that's the facility you're in today, as well as the Shasta County Arts Council. Some of, some of our workshops are held there at Old Reading City Hall, and they record them and they present them on public access TV. So um, the idea behind the 530 Media Project is the Record Searchlight want to do some community outreach and provide um, workshops to the community on um, whatever their needs might be. I did a poll about a year or so ago and asked people what they were interested in and there was a real need for social media instruction as well as um, Excel and uh, Google Drive for collaboration, video production, that kind of thing. So that's why um, we're here today. In your information that I've passed out, there is a sheet that we ask that you fill out um, just to let us know how we're doing, how we can improve. And on the back is some suggestions for future workshops. And um, I'm also looking if there's not something on there that's listed that you want to learn about, just write it down and I'll see if I can find an expert. If I don't know the material, I'll find someone in the community who does. So um, I wanted to um, introduce you to um, Brett Christensen, he is the director here at Pacific Sky. He's in the back. Hey everybody. Just real quick, wanted to welcome everybody to our facility and uh, let you know there's some water back here if you like and uh, restrooms are just in this back corner as well. And uh, we're a uh, full service marketing company doing branding, graphic design, video production, but we all think that's what it does. So love to see what's happening here and being in partnership with need anything at all this evening, uh, facility-wise, my office is just right around the corner here, so couldn't give you a shot. Great, thanks, Brett. Okay, today we have a, a guest presenter. I normally um, present, but this is, is not my expertise. This is Gabriel Leet's expertise, so he's with Shasta Social Media, and he'll be presenting today. Thank you. Hi. So I, <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so as, as she said, I'm Gabriel Leet with Shasta Social Media. Um, what I'd like to do actually today is start off with maybe writing down a couple of the questions that you might have so that I can address them and if they're not addressed by the end of the presentation here, maybe we can address them a little bit further. Um, so does anybody have any specific questions that they were aimed to, or what do you want to get out of this uh, meetup today? No? That's okay. We'll get started then. Well, I have one question. I, okay. I ended up, I have about three uh, Facebook pages, yes. and I'm launching my new project, product and probably need to do another page. And I'm kind of confused. I have uh, people following all three, mainly right. two of them. One of them is a business that I don't really do much anymore. I don't know how to shift the people or if you can yeah that's difficult you can ask them to go to your other page pretty much is what you can do um, you could say that, is it something that's going to be ongoing or something that you're not going to continue on probably not continue on you could probably let them know and set a specific target date and say look I'm no longer going to be working this page I would like to see you over here please uh, go like that page and follow us there so that's okay. probably the best way to handle that. You really can't shift your followers over to another page. You, now, on the other hand, if you've created a personal page, and it's a Facebook page that's set up for a personal account, but you are using it through business, there is a way to salvage that. But, okay, it, the, the, yeah, but you, know, you won't be able to shift the page over. You know? uh, one other question sure. is... Uh, is Facebook still gaining or are other, uh, you know, if you touch on other uh, sources that are starting to gain uh, more prominent, such as Instagram and others? Yeah, so what I would say is that follow where you're getting the most engagement and the most interaction and you're getting the most followers. You know, people say, why do you want tons of followers? But I say it's because it gives you a base of people. And you'll, out of all those followers, you may only have 10 people that interact with you regularly. But those 10 people were found through going through the sea of all the other followers. So 
it's, it's definitely worth exploring different social media accounts, different platforms, to see which platform works the best for you, especially with whatever it is that you're doing. I happen to know it's photography, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, what, whatever it is that you're going to aim at. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so um, I, I would like, if you want to ask questions throughout the whole thing, that's fine. Um, I don't mind that at all. At the end, there will be a questions and answering uh, section, and so if you would like to save your questions, write them down, ask me then, that's fine too, but if uh, you have questions during the presentation, just please go ahead and let me know what your question might be. Okay. So, uh, what is social media optimization? Social media optimization is the use of the number of social media platforms and channels to generate publicity, to increase awareness of a product, brand, or event. Types of social media include social networking uh, sites like Twitter, Google+, Facebook, and blog sites. Um, these are just a few, but I am going to really focus on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+, because those are kind of the three main platforms that I think that everybody should be on. If you're going to have a social media marketing plan, those are three that you should probably include um, for different reasons, and I'll get into those reasons as we go. Um, and, and basically, social media optimization really is making your social media better. So if, if you're paid, you know, as your business grows or as your pages grow, um, you'll want to optimize those. You want to continually reevaluate what it is that you have in your pages and figure out what it is, where your market's going to be, and what you're going to do next with that page, and then change your page accordingly. So... Um, Setting up your pages, uh, if you, like I was mentioning, if you've set up a Facebook business page on a personal account, you're going to want to get that back to a business page, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and I will get in, into that right now. But um, So if you're going to create a page, give your brand or business cause a voice on Facebook and connect with the people that matter to you. So you'll want to choose which type of, you know, if you're a band or an artist, you're going to pick this. If it's entertainment, this is more like a, a record company or things like that. Social media organization or institution, I mean, you know, a company or uh, institution, or local business in place. And the reason why you'd want to pick certain ones is because people can check in with you. People can, you know, share your posts uh, to specific... Yes? So creating a page, in Facebook you still have your personal page. Yes. And then from there you create another page. Correct. That's a business page. Yes, yes. Okay, at some point I'm going to be asking you if you know I did that and for some reason I can't um, do that thing where you do a post on your business page and then get it to go on other people's pages. It they, it's not that. visible to other people? Um, it is if they've liked my page. Yes, yes. But if not, there are people who have asked me to do the thing where you tag them. Ta that's the word I want. And it won't let me tag anybody. It'll only tag like like if I try to put in somebody local <coughs> yeah. come up with a famous name, not somebody local. Yeah. That's because the famous people have a, like a fan page. And so the local people will have just a regular uh, Facebook page. And you won't be able to tag them necessarily in that page, um, not as your page, but you could tag them on there from your personal account. Okay. So there's a little arrow, down arrow on the post that you made, and you can switch it to yourself, your personal self, and then you can tag people on that. So if they look at it, then they're going to my personal page, not my business page. No, they'll they'll be uh, they'll look at your business page by the tag. The tag will take them to the post that your business page made. Even though I'm posting, I'm on my business. But you're tagging page, as yourself. But tagging as myself. Correct. Try that. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right. So, uh, setting up your page. Let's see. So setting up your page on Google Plus. Now I think this is like really important, and a lot of people. They say they've tried Google Plus and that they got really almost no interaction on there. They didn't get a lot of followers. Maybe not a lot of people are seeing their posts. But the one thing that I've got to say, though, is if you, if you make posts in Google Plus, you've got to keep in mind that not only Google Search Engine and Facebook are all the same company, basically. So you, 
if you're making posts in Google+, Plus, those will show up on a search engine, especially Google. So when you're making a post, if you put keywords in there like Reading, um, social media, for instance, for me, or uh, photography on, or, or this type of post about a certain type of camera or whatever it is that you're posting, when you do that, um, those will show up in the search engine when people search those specific keywords. Okay. So even if you're getting like zero interaction and no, no one's really seen the posts and, and you feel like it's fruitless, it's not. It's absolutely necessary. And, it, you know, also, too, if you've got your own business, you know, Google My Business. Of course, you can't see that. Um, it, if you haven't signed up for Google My Business yet, um, that is how you get your business on a preview plane. And let me show you what that is. So that's, that's the preview plane there. And so you can see that it's got a map. Mine's really general because I don't want people showing up to my house. That's the address that I use on my business license. Now, if you have a specific shop or a specific thing mm -hmm. um, where you want people to know where you are and you're able to be found, that will be, it will show you right there. And also, too, you can put in your hours. Um, I have never closed on there, so it doesn't show my hours. But if you have specific, oh. No, I guess I don't. <laughs> I guess I'm closed right now. I, I think I put 9 to 5 so people wouldn't call me after 5 necessarily. Um, although, I'll take calls at any time. Um, so, and, and you can see uh, some of the things that you do. You're, if you put your um, presence in your social media, you can see that your social media will show up as well. Um, some of the things you do, certain blogs on even other people's pages will show up. So, um, it's, it's a good thing, really, to get yourself with that Google. And I'd like to show you a code here. I can find it easily. I think I can. Now I don't have it. Anyway, Google sends you a code, and what happens is you'll take that code, and, and what it does is verifies your page. So if I go to Google My Business, I fill out all the fields, I put my business in there, what they do is they send you a code in the mail. And that's because they want to know that that's your address and that you're actually getting mail there. And so then you'll get that code, and you'll put that code into the, into the Google My Business, and it will create this preview plane for you. And it will also put you higher rankings in so in in the search engine. So it's worth it's worth definitely going to do that. So uh, setting up your pages on Twitter. Um, so this thing's kind of set up. This is just a picture of this. And so creating your uh, Twitter presence right here. It'll show you the numbers here. Um, so one's your username, the number one right there. Um, two is the profile photo, and the photos will have specific sizes, and I'll go through that in just a little bit. And then um, three is your bio, so that is where you're going to put your description. Now, with Twitter, you don't want to necessarily put in your um, in your bio here your web page because you already have a place for that just below that. You can see where that little link is up there. Um, it says your website.com. That's where you'll put it. In others, I suggest that you do. In Facebook, I suggest that you do, even though you have that. You can use hashtags in your Twitter username, and so when people search hashtags, your business will be in the businesses. But I would only use those sparingly and specifically. Okay, this is a stupid question. But I'm still not sure about a hashtag. Okay. And is if you hashtag something and then... Uh, the only thing that pops up in my mind right now is Dancing with Stars, because you always watch that. And it's then got a hashtag. Hashtag this or hashtag that. Yeah. Is that a only person can use that hashtag and that tag, or can other people? Anyone can use them, and so sometimes actually you have to be careful. You have to be careful where that hashtag is going to land. So if you, if you don't want your name associated with something horrible, let's say... And, and that hashtag is in that kind of a horror, it lands you into that horrible place. 
you want to make sure your hashtag's pretty specific. It, you got to kind of think of it like, uh, like a group table. And if you put a hashtag out there, it's basically saying, meet us at this table. So here's the, here's the group of people that are talking about this specific thing at this specific time. It also helps you visibility, and also it creates backlinks. So sometimes if somebody goes in later on, searches, let's say, bur hashtag Bernie Falls, you're going to find all kinds of pictures and all kinds of stories about Bernie Falls. So it's kind of a... It's kind of a good thing to do, but you definitely, I always check my hashtags if I'm going to, especially if I'm going to use it specifically as a marketing position. So you want to check the hashtags, but if you put your hashtag in, in Twitter, if you put your hashtag in there, what will happen is when somebody searches a hashtag and that hashtag fits your business, like if I put hashtag social media, then when somebody searches a hashtag of social media, it'll ask them, are you looking for posts? Are you looking for people? Are you looking for places? So, so it's a good thing to put a hashtag in there, but it's good also to be specific and not just run a whole group of hashtags in there. So if you're trying to promote a small local business, but you want to get it out there to out, those out of the area that may be coming to visit, um, would you do hashtag Reading? Uh, yeah, well, use? yeah. I've never so, used hashtags before, so that's one of my questions. Yeah, so so if you use hashtag Redding, um, it's going to be pretty general. And pretty much anything that has to do with Redding, if somebody just put a hashtag Redding in there, they'll see all the different things. But if it, but let's say you're saying um, Redding Sundial Bridge, and then you put that in there. Well, then they're going to get Sundial Bridge specific things. Okay. So, so in my case, I'm a bed and breakfast, so I do Redding... Hotel, Redding Motels. Well, you, you could do Redding b and B's. You could yeah. do, yeah. But what I would do actually is I would search your specific industries hashtags online and also search different hashtags through, um, because if they're coming to look for a Redding b and mm -hmm. they're not necessarily going to say Redding b and on a hashtag, although some people will that are a little more savvy and they'll find you through that. So okay. it's good to vary them also. Um, I use specific ones to continue to keep continuity. So the specific ones that I use, for instance, Shasta Social, hashtag Shasta Social, it pretty much is just me. You know, they're not going to find too many other things that are that. So if they search that, they can see all my other posts that I've made with that hashtag and see um, what kind of services I offer, whatever it is that I'm hashtagging for that. Mm -hmm. So for you specifically, if you put Reading B&B, um, it, there may be other Reading B and B's using that, but yours will also be in that group. So that's a, probably a good one. But and then motels, hotels, those. Well, are they the, too general, yeah. Or? Motels, hotels could l land you on an international basis. No, I mean uh, Reading hotels. Oh yeah, like Reading hotels. Yeah, so Reading hotels would if somebody's searching for Reading hotels. Oftentimes yeah. though, they'll also be searching online for those. Yeah. So. With the Google Plus thing I was talking about, it's yeah. a good idea I'm to good, make I'm those. I'm good with Google Plus. I just don't. I've never used the hashtag, so that's. Oh yeah. Okay. So. Let's see. Uh, is the hashtag only with Twitter? No, you know you with, can use a hashtag on pretty much anything now. Um, you Facebook has hashtags. You can, oh, yeah. yeah, Instagram, um, and and in fact, some of them, for instance, Instagram, you'll want to use a lot of hashtags. But when it comes to something like uh, Twitter or Facebook, you really want to use one or two. The uh, Buffer did a thing. I think it was Buffer. Could have been. Uh, could have. I, I don't remember who it was exactly. It could have been HubSpot. But anyway, what they did was um, they basically. <laughs> so they basically did a thing that said like, okay, if we did four hashtags, how, what kind of interaction and engagement do we get? If we did three hashtags, what kind? If we get one hashtag, or if we do like 10 of them in there. And they found the numbers too. They found the best number for hashtags in those, in, in those events or two. I have a comment from the online audience. Yeah. Um, let's see, Ruben Garcia says, piggybacking or hashtag stealing on other business hashtags can be dangerous for businesses and could backfire. Create your own identity so your customers can identify with you. Yeah, and that's true in some cases. And uh, like I said, it's definitely good to research your hashtag. Although piggybacking can be kind of 
a sore subject, like saying, uh, basically saying like, um, if I say hotel, uh, Reading Hotels, well, that's not necessarily piggybacking, that's actually putting yourself in a forum. So it just depends. If you, yeah, if somebody's using a specific, a specific hashtag, like 530 Media Project, for instance, and I, um, and then I just use that just to make people in that group aware of what I'm doing, that's kind of, I, I don't know how to coin it, but basically it's pretty rude to do. It's pretty rude to try to get yourself into some. You know, there's a lot of people, too, that will take your posts, for instance, a Twitter post or something like that that you've made, and then they'll use their comments on it, and they'll continually do that. Or they'll tag you into their um, pictures or their marketing or whatever it is, and that's the same type of thing, same type of piggybacking. It's not okay to do that, and you should really try to be original anyway. But there are specific things that you do want to get yourself into. If I'm writing something about search engine optimization or social media optimization like we're talking about today, I'm going to use a hashtag SMO because I want people who are into search, social media optimization to see what it is that I'm doing. So, yes, there is, there is a plane where you're actually getting into somebody else's hashtags or into somebody else's business, but it's a good idea if you want to put yourself in a market of people. So, um, so you want to make your username discoverable. Uh, so basically you want to use a name that people can recognize. Mine actually is pretty bad. Shasta, everybody pretty much is Shasta around <laughs> Redding, all the way up north, you know. And social, mm -hmm. I get like social services, social support, you know, there's so many different things. And then media, there's all sorts of media outlets. So really, my name's not that great. Um, with Shasta Social, it's recognizable. And um, I'm also a business instead of using my personal account promoting business. So I also have to rely on a logo. So mine, mine's actually kind of more of an uphill battle. If you're, if you're wanting to be original and stay, stand out, I would pick usernames that represent you, but are also original so that other people can see them a lot easier, so they can find you a lot easier. All right, so um, your profile picture should reflect your brand. If you're a recognized company with a brand logo, use your logo. But if you're an actor, politician, musician, or public figure, be sure to use a headshot. Um, a lot of professionals will definitely use a headshot. A lot of doctors will use headshots. Things like that, you, you just want to basically um, build trust. And so a logo is nothing. It's just kind of a cold business statement. But a picture of you is definitely personable, and it lends trust. And trust is extremely important in social media optimization. So um, example of my logo. <laughs> there. So before uploading your photo um, that you're going to be using, even if it's your headshot, or especially if it's your logo, uh, make, or if it's a building, a business, for instance, that isn't really well found, but for instance, the uh, Anderson Historical Society is a bright yellow building with the address right in the front. And so that's the, that's the logo that they use on the front. Um, even if you're using any of those things, you want to change it from whatever picture, camera setting it has. You're like, image, IMG. Or if it says uh, DSC4852, but if you change it and you use your business name or you use your name or you use whatever you want that picture to be able to be discovered as, you can also add tags to that, um, which is a little more complicated, but you can get into the, uh, into the preferences, into the, um, what's it called? You know, uh, shoot, I'm having a blank. Anyway, um, you get into the um, properties of it and you can add tags to that and so when people search specific things they can find those specific tags and if you change your name like if I put it Shasta social media dot jpg then when somebody searches online Shasta social media what you'll find in images is a number of things but including my logo because I changed the logo name so that helps to become more discoverable also you could also put Facebook, whatever, if you're going to use it for your Facebook, Facebook Shasta Social, or you could put Twitter Shasta Social, 
whatever it is. And so when somebody says Shasta Social Twitter and they look on there, then my logo is going to come up too. So that's helpful. Uh, before, uh, if you have a website that has multiple pages and use analytics, like Google Analytics, I use, um, you, you can embed it in your page. Uh, but you can also actually, with SEM and different things, you can also do analytics on your social media. There's many, many, many ones that you can use Hootsuite, whatever it is that a lot of people use. Um, but this will bring you to your analytics. And you can tell by which page, you can get deeper into this, and you can tell by exactly which page it is that you sent people. So if, if you know that you're going to send people to your blog from Facebook, then from your Facebook blog, you can tell, well, these people must have came from Facebook because they are, these people are landing on my blog, especially if you're running a campaign, a social media campaign, and you decide that you wanted to make sure people are coming from Facebook, you're trying to beef up your Facebook, so I want people to, so I want to be able to analyze that. I want to be able to see these people came from Facebook. So that's one of the things you can do is, is specify where it is your links are going to. So Does Google Analytics cost money? No, it's free. free. Okay. It's free. And, and so it's, you can generate the code for free, and you can, um, you can Google My Business free. All that's free, unless you want to do paid ads which is actually also smart depending on what, you're, what company you're running, what kind of thing you're running. So this is my blog. This is where it landed when, uh, when I checked the blog page. And so I know if people have gone to which specific blog that I have because each one of them are dynamic on their own. Okay, question. Sure. Uh, is the blog where you would start and filter it down to all the other Facebook, twi Twitter, or whatever? Do you start at well, Twitter and work at that? How, so actually, so a lot of things, a lot, basically all of them you with social media. Social media is basically kind of like a channel that brings people back to even more information. And where you want to keep them is where you have the most information. That's usually your web page. And with a blog, basically you're gaining social media, I mean you're gaining search engine optimization but you're using the social media to get them to your blog. So your blog is the full story. The social media is the part of the story that gets them interested, that gets them to your blog, and then from there you want to convert them. So it, the key is basically to get them to your blog, but you're able to see where that came from. You're able to see if it came from Twitter, you're able to see where it came from, and so you're able to say, well, I'm getting more engagement from Twitter. More people are coming from Twitter, and they're going to my blog than they are from Facebook. So you can design your social, your next goals in social media for that. So it goes Twitter, uh, example, uh, Twitter to your blog, and then to your web page. Yeah. So well, yeah. So technically, your blog should be on your web page unless you're using WordPress or some kind of third party, so you know some sort of third party blog links. But um, but technically, I mean, it's best if you can get them on your page. So. If you're getting them on your page, there's more li they're more likely to click, click about. They're more likely to click uh, send message for services, whatever it is that you have on yours. Um, let me show you mine. So I have a contact us today on the first page there. Um, I have the links, my social media links on the bottom and on the side. I want people to be able to get a hold of me real easily. You can send me a Facebook message directly off the page, and you can send me, you know, contact right off of the page as well. Although I do have a specific contact page. How did you set that up? Is that a different program? Um, yeah, so I actually downloaded, um, there's like things you can insert into your page that will show up, so that you can insert them into your header or footer, or sometimes you can just... Oh, the widgets? Yeah, the widgets, mm -hmm. yeah. So those are some of the widgets, but if you look here and, and you go to my contact page, for instance, it's still everything still there. I still have the social media links, everything's still there. So that's, that's pretty much the key. And in a second, something should pop up, but I'm not going to give it the time. That says if you want a free, get a part of my newsletter, then you can sign up through that. I, I'm not a fan of the ones that pop up right away and they kind of take up the whole page and they're hard to get rid of and sometimes you even have to scroll them to find the X and stuff. 
I'm not a fan of those. I prefer um, it to be something small. And if they're going to be on my web page for a while, then I can tell they're probably interested in social media and they probably want that. So it's okay for it to take a little extra time in my, in my case. Another thing about linking back is it was at one of these classes that someone had mentioned copyright and that there was something that if you just post on Facebook, the whole thing, in effect, Facebook owns it. If you post part of it and link back to your website, there's less of a copyright issue. Does that sound correct? That could be pretty true. They, basically, if one, whatever you post on social media becomes public. So, so you might do the beginning of your blog and then the link. To yeah, the but the, but there's still some shaky ground there. For instance, oh. if it's a picture, um, you know, and you share that picture, that could be copyrighted picture even though it's been shared to social media. But it can be shared freely. I always just make sure to add credit to everything. It's a lot easier and, you know, it, you could you could technically put all rights reserved on there even. I mean, you could put um, copyright all rights reserved on your post too. I don't. I want it to be shared as much as possible. I want as many people to see it as possible. And I don't even copyright my pictures. I don't. I would love for somebody to steal my pictures. So that, I mean, that's just how I feel. <laughs> so um, you want to brand your cover photos and your background images. Um, so I have my logo. You might have your picture. You might have whatever. But this tells a story. So it really, if you want to make sure that your background picture tells the story of your company. If, if your company is building bridges, you might have the best bridge you built in the background there, you know, or people working on the bridge or something like that, showing that you're a bridge builder. If, if you are in social media, you're going to want uh, social media pictures in there. Um, I've changed mine since then, but um, this is just an example <coughs> of one um, that I have used, and it's a pretty good one. Um, I actually gave credit to the person that made the picture on the picture, and uh, I'll discuss more of that in just a minute because I'm going to be getting into the links. But um, one thing that I use a lot is photo editing. And let's say, um, let's say you are a photographer and you've made a great picture of Mount Shasta, but which you would really like in there is Mount Shasta with a moon on it or something like that. Uh, we won't do this. We'll do it like this. So I can find any picture, basically. I don't know if I can do all that right now. Uh, but no, because I don't know any pictures on here. Um, so, but what you can do is you what you'll do is hit edit. You'll choose a photo, and then you'll use an overlay feature. And that overlay feature will allow you to be able to. I have several links to this, so that's I didn't think to log into that. I, I was gonna say I have some pictures in my Google Drive. If you just wanted to pop in there and grab one, I think I can grab them from Drive. It should be open in the top at the top on the top tabs. Oh, you know, I could just get a picture. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, in fact, I just thought about that. I can just get a picture offline. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me do that real fast. So, all right, this one. This one's actually public commons, I think, too. So save image. Mount Shasta aerial. And then I want to have a moon. And you know, it's funny if so. Some things are if you, if they're Creative Commons, if they're if they're free pictures that you're able to use freely. There's a, believe it or not, there's tons of them. There's even websites that you can go to that have just those types of pictures. I use one uh, camp something, and it's all camping pictures. And so I use the tent pictures and stuff for Shasta Lake camping and different things like that. And they're free, and you can use them and. You know, it, it doesn't have to be Shasta Lake when what you're focused on is a tent. So, I mean, it really, you can find a lot of pictures that way. Um, but you want to find things when you're doing an overlay with no background. So, with no background. Let's see, we'll just take this moon. Always view image, that way you can see if it actually does have a background or not. This one actually is called Moon Transparent. So, so I'll take my Mount Shasta picture and I'll do an overlay. Hopefully, yeah, good. And I'll pick my own and it'll 
there'll be a moon. I mean, this is just ridiculous, and I'm doing it fast, but you get the idea. Um, so, you know, if, if for instance, you're an aerial photographer, or if you're a, uh, a, a, you know, whatever it is that you do, you study um, the geography of the Earth, you know, maybe you're not going to add the moon, but maybe there is certain things that you would like to add to it, little pictures of the different types of rocks that make up Mount Shasta, or whatever it is that you're going to do. And you can overlay them in the corner, and you could put words to them. You could say, this is, you know, um, granite. And I know Mount Shasta doesn't have a lot of granite on it. But this is granite and, you know, whatever rocks that are, whatever make up Mount Shasta. So we know it's a volcano, so it probably doesn't have a lot of granite. But so that's one way that you can do that. And you can also do this with uh, social media pictures. Stagger them, make them 3D, overlay them, whatever it is that you want to do. You can get signs that have like five signs sticking up and say this way to this place, this way to this place, whatever it is you want to do. So modifying your header photo is a really good idea. I might be jumping ahead a little bit, but you can also resize it. So this is the resize feature. And you can keep it proportional or you can use different percentages. And I know I'm probably going to go back over this, but... So if I make it 180 sized um, and it'll keep its proportions, it'll be really small. So this is really helpful when, it is, when you're resizing your pictures to fit your Facebook, especially if you have a really high quality picture. You can use section of it, you can use whatever you want, but you still know you need to fit it into your Facebook profile. You still need to fit it into your Twitter profile, but this gives you the options to be able to pick the, the sizes and the proportions that you need to make that happen. And PicMonkey is another free tool. Yeah, it's, it's free. I, I pay for the upgrade because it has other options in it too, but there, there's a ton of free tools out there. How much it's, does the upgrade cost? Uh, I think I paid maybe 35 for the year, 40 maybe for the year. It was well worth it for sure. Um, and I'm not trying to... I, I use PicMonkey a lot because I love it, but I, I'm, I have no affiliation. I'm not trying to sell it. So... <laughs> Um, also, too, if you want to like get some good ideas for uh, Facebook covers, um, and there's Canva also has them for Twitter. You can find them just by Google searching this. But here's some creative ones. I think um, how and they, you know, it's a good idea to make them blend together. You've got that one kind of fits a theme. That's probably an artist. Let's see, I don't know. But yeah, this wedding collection. I don't know about that P for. Uh, for a logo, uh, and this is here's an example. That this one's a really good example of bringing them together. So this person actually made this and that go together, and they had to calculate that. They actually had to figure out how that was going to fit together, and so that's a really good way to to keep um, to keep continu continuity in the picture. You know, that's a you can also do these types of things. You can. Um, make the picture look like it's coming in or out on Pig Monkey as well. So you can do a lot of these things on there. A lot of people use a lot of different types of programs. Uh, um, Photoshop would be no yeah. problem. But. Yeah, photo, Photoshop Lite does most of those things too. So there's, you know, there's different ones that you can get for free also that are easy to, fun you know, they're easily functioning. But this is a good place to get some ideas for some uh, Here's great gradients. That one's kind of good. Yeah. So, and see, this lady has the same color paint in there. So it's a good idea to pair your pictures. Um, mine's a little more paired now. Sometimes I'll use, like, if it's 4th of July, I'll actually add, like, bursts off of it. Or I'll do, you know, or if it's um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I'll put a pink ribbon in there. You know, you can do all kinds of things like that. Do you recommend changing the background photo often? Or? Yes, mm -hmm. they, not only, especially on Facebook, because with Facebook, people see that even if they're if they're following you, but they but it doesn't come up in their feed very well because they're following so many people. Those things take priority in um, in in Facebook, so they'll actually come up a little bit easier. And actually, when you change your uh, Facebook profile, er, almost everybody that follows you sees it, so it's definitely a good idea. 
So you're changing the background often? I changed the I changed the background and I changed my photo, but um, I'll only change my photo to a degree. Even though you're trying to brand yourself? Yeah, yeah. So far, basically, my Facebook background is the same as my website. Mine are all the same across the board. Um, so I have the same background on all my channels right now. Um, and But if you... You don't have to change all for, but sometimes it's different. For Google Plus, I wanted to gear mine more for um, travel and tourism, so I have like mountains mm -hmm. usually, things like that. But for for this instance, for today, I actually changed them to all the same because if you want to keep that branding going, you want to keep you. Everybody wants to see the same thing over and over again, and then it starts becoming embedded in their minds, and that keeps the branding going. That's why I was confused about changing it. But yeah, but changing but changing it is still not a bad idea and it doesn't hurt to get a fresh face on something. People can also get tired of seeing the same thing. All right, so you can also do I don't well we did this at the newspaper, but um, you can utilize or tap into community engagement by um, running contests or asking oh, yeah. people to submit photos and then using that as your background photo and give yeah. them credit on the photo. Something that need, mm, I didn't touch on or any of those pictures that I just saw didn't touch on at all too is you can put brand messages in there. You can put your tagline in there. You can put your impress them. You can put a lot of things in the, into the background photo of your picture. Um, what, it rec what it says though is it says don't put your contact or web page directly on there. Um, they they ding you for that. So it's a good idea to put some words in there or give a, give a motivational uh, quote or something in the background picture, but don't, don't put all your information in there, your phone number, your web page, all that stuff, because there's places for that already. And they will ding you for that. Um, so on Facebook, there's specific dimensions, and like I said, you can change that. Um, in that PicMonkey, I showed you where you can resize. And there's a lot of different resizing tools, but um, these are very specific. So for a highlighted image, for your profile image, and a shared image, they have very specific uh, sizes. Now, if you use a small size, you'll notice this on a lot of people's page. You'll, they'll use a small pixel or a small uh, 300 DPI or less. And what will happen is when it expands out to fit the picture, it gets blurry and it looks pretty cheap and it looks pretty bad. So you want to make sure that your picture can be resized in the first place. So that's another thing that you can do is check that. But actually, sometimes you'll want to use too big of a picture or you'll want to use too small of a picture and, and so that it creates a specific effect, too. So like I, I have a picture where it's a, it's a complete um, panoramic view of, of uh, Crater Lake. And from that, you put it into a picture like that, and, I mean into a header, and what you'll get is only this section, and what it was was just the whole lake, and it was per. I loved it. So th there's ways to manipulate that too, as well. Even if you don't have the right size photo, sometimes that actually works in your favor. But um, if you're gonna, there's a link on there. If you click the link, um, this is like the best. This is a social media image sizes uh, cheat sheet, and it has every every social media um, platform on it. Pinterest, it shows what size they are, and you can see Pinterest are very small. Um, a lot of web page, a lot of web pages have small pictures, so those translate really well. Um, Instagram has small, unless you're using. Where is that information? Yeah, where? So it's on uh, right here. It says click here for all dimensions across all channels, and you hit sizes, right? Yeah, so I can send you a link to that presentation. It's currently on the 530 Media Project blog, but if, when you fill out your evaluation at the end, just put down your email address and say that you want to receive this presentation, on, and I'll send you the link. And could you not also search it through Google Slides, too? Um, maybe. I've never tried that. Uh, yeah, I, I think maybe, too. Mm -hmm. Not absolutely positive. All right, so this is um, this is the pick monkey. I was using it to resize, so I said I would touch on that again. Um, I resized this photo down after cropping it, and um, so that you can see that you can get 500 by 435 on it. But let me, I want to kind of elaborate on that right now. So got the moon here. 
and we want to resize that down. But let's say we want it to fit a specific one. So we want it to be 110 by 110 because we're going to insert it into a group of pictures. Or if we're going to do ducks in a row like the 161 right there. So we'll do 161 by 161 on here. Well, that would be proportional, wouldn't it? Let's see. We'll do something else. There's one. Two. Okay, so we're on Pinterest, and we want a 222 by 150. So you'll take off the proportions, and you'll do, what was it, 221? No, 222 by 150. So 222 and 150. And that, see, it creates like an oval. But, <laughs> but if you keep it proportional and you do it 230 now your picture is going to fit and it's going to take out some of the background and it's still not going to be an oval anymore it's going to be back to a moon so that's the that's what I like to make sure people understand is that it can change if you change the dimensions of it specifically it could elongate it it could make it look like a Bruce Lee movie there's lots of things it can do to it but that's the way that you can resize without uh, without hitting the specific target that they ask you for. Instead of hitting the 222 by 150, what you're going to hit is 230, and it's going to keep it proportional. But what it'll do is it'll take out the rest of that picture, and it will probably fit quite well. So just experiment with it. Play with it. That's what I do, and that works well for me. I, I created that picture through PicMonkey that's on that tweet. <clears throat> and Buffer loved it. So um, so you can change your name. If you've already created a business name and it's a long name uh, and you want it to change to a shorter name, my, I like to keep, especially on Facebook, keep your full name. But on Twitter, it's better if you shorten it. Most social channels, it's better if you shorten it. Um, Shasta Social Media is not too long. How do you get to request new page name? So you go into your... Uh, you go into your about and then you click the edit button and okay. you'll go and onto what? page info. You're on fa in Facebook? What you yeah, that, that's, that's on Facebook. So let's see if I can do that here real quick for you. So here we are on Facebook. Um, you go down to your about. Did I already pass it? Yeah, here I am. No, here I am. So see the little pencil that comes up when I hover over it? You can click that, and you can click edit, and that'll bring you into here. So here's where you can change your new username or your name, and you can change the categories, subcategories. You can change anything through that. So to change your name, um, I'm, I might be mistaken, but tell me. Um, I think the Facebook will only let you do it once. Uh, yeah. Is that right? So I think you can do it up to three times. Okay. Um, but it has to be approved. And after you do it one time, yeah, you, you have to be approved, I think. Mm -hmm. I can check that out. Question? Yeah. Yes? You, uh, I've got a Facebook, I've got my personal Facebook, and I've got a business Facebook. How do I get this um, settings private on my personal one and public on the other one? Okay. Um, so, you, so business is always public. Um, but on your personal, let me see okay, where that, so that was my. So when I go to change it, that's that's all I'm allowed to change, right? It's my. That's what it's going yeah, to do. Yeah, you you don't okay. you de definitely with your business you definitely don't want anything private. You right. definitely want to post that as public as possible. As many right. people can see it, the better. So, but yeah, with your personal one, you can't. You, are you familiar with that or? Well, I kept trying to do it, and I couldn't. I couldn't see it. So, okay, so I would change one, and I thought, well. How do, I, how, do I, how do I set the other one? It looked like they were tied together. Yeah. So. Yeah, they they're not. Um, although one can be used as a control page for the other. So there's no way to um, private my business one, right? No. It's perfect. So then when I go in and I get private, private, that's only going to go to my personal. Correct, one. yeah. Okay. Yep. Good to know. Yeah. Wait, so run that by me. You can go into your personal Facebook page and say, let's say, you want things private, and yeah. then switch to your business page and say you want it public. Or no, because it it's, it's, just, just, it's just automatically public. It just won't change. Yeah, it won't change your business at all. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, so you can change with your personal one for friends of friends or uh, only me. 
<laughs> which I don't know why anybody would make a post with only me, <laughs> but uh, friends of friends or friends can see. So if you just want just your friends that all already are your friends to see a post that you made, you can change it to that. Or if you want your friends, friends to also be able to see that, then you can set those settings. won't affect your business at all. And not to be stupid, but on my business one, so I've got like 25 people that have liked it. I've invited them to like it. Mm -hmm. Are, do they follow it now? Is that Well, that you way? can invite them, and they don't have to take that. Uh, you'll usually get a notification if they did uh, like it. And I did. So yeah. now every time I post something, does it go into them? Yeah, well, so it goes into, it, it basically it gets posted, but it, it's a matter of where it lands in their feed. Okay. It's also a matter of Facebook's algorithm, yeah. right? So yeah. it just depends. I, I don't okay. want to be too technical. <laughs> they have a very specific algorithm, and the algorithm of Facebook is also about to change, and it's also going to make it harder for businesses to land in. That's why I'm starting to embrace other channels much more. Um, I love well, that's what my question, I heard that people are, businesses are going away from Facebook. Yeah, to a degree, although it's still very effective, I would stay on Facebook for sure that myself, um, and, I, and I would encourage most people to also. Um, I, okay, so it's funny, you look at my Facebook here on Shasta Social and you won't see much engagement, you won't see much things happening there, not, not too many likes, but the pages that I manage have a ton of likes and a ton of engagement and so it really ends and one of those that I get the most engagement and the most likes from are is uh, all organic I've never paid for a boost ever so so you can create it can still be relevant even if it may even if they make it harder for businesses but when but also too when you pay for a promotion and there's less uh, business on your feed then that business is going to be more prominent on your feed. So, yeah, changes are good and bad sometimes, but with Facebook, most people complain. <laughs> so, yeah, I, but I've embraced Twitter quite a bit. I, I now, even with that, the account that I'm talking about, um, even with that account, Twitter has finally uh, surpassed it. And, uh, so, I mean, I get, like, maybe 54 likes in a day, you know, on on. Facebook, you know, depending on what it is, I, I've got up to a thousand five hundred likes on a single post. But, but what I mean is, is that it with Twitter, it was all a real engagement. It was real people talking, people showing me their pictures, people engaging with me. And on Facebook, it's just people liking it. So it really makes a difference, I think. That's why I'm starting to embrace it a little bit more. Although I, I won't stray away from Facebook still. Is Twitter the same thing where it's public? Twitter? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. So, but you can with you can set it up where uh, you have like a little more privacy, or you can even have it so that you can lock your account out and people have to request to become your friend. But I would never encourage any of that with business, right? It, unless unless you have a business where it's only specific people that you're talking and marketing to, then you could put a lock on that, and then people can request to. And if it's somebody that you recognize, but but typically if it's a if it's a retail business or any other kind of business, you want as much publicity as possible. So you definitely don't want privacy settings on that. Um, this is kind of funny. It's this is a pretty good guideline on here. It already says with Facebook naming tips, do name do use a name that's accurately represents your page, what your page is about. And match the name of your business, brand, or organization, but don't mislead people by representing another person, business, and we all know that that happens a lot, actually. And include, do not include any uh, word f of Facebook or include the word official, especially like Gabriel's official Facebook page. I mean, that would be like the ultimate no-no. And then uh, don't use terms or phrases that might be abusive or violate somebody's rights. And I see those, all those things across the board. I'm a big fan of keeping business separate than any of my beliefs, so I keep all of that out. There are successful companies in Reading and Anderson that do blend those together. I would suggest keeping it out. That's just my preferences. I, you know, some some things you may not think are abusive or or violate somebody else's right to believe something else, but they might. So you might be dismissing a crowd of customers that you would have normally. 
but but won't like you because of what you posted. <laughs> so, so I keep those out of there. <clears throat> uh, your bi business name versus your username. So long business names should be shortened but still recognizable and discoverable. Um, here's a good example. Anderson Historical Society and Museum, shown here, has sh been shortened to Anderson Museum. Well, there's also two other Anderson Museums in other states, so, um, so there's a lot of confusion there, but these names were available, so we grabbed them. Um, with Anderson Historical Society and Museum, here's their web page. Uh, you want full name there. You, you can see the building I was talking about with the, um, with the address on it. So that makes the building more recognizable. Most people just drive by it and say, I never even knew this was here. But then when they see that, it catches their attention and they go, oh, there's that, you know, there's the historical society. So that's, a, that's one thing. We wanted to keep the name shorter, but still not take away the whole theme of it. So Anderson Museum was pretty fitting. Anderson Historical Society was taken. Um, but since it's been shortened to Anderson Museum, uh, you can still have your web page on there. You can still have your phone number in the title. And it, this definitely creates continuity. So you want to use your full business name on your Facebook profile. So it does say Anderson Historical Society. Uh, I should have had a link there. Let me see. So as you can see, it has the full name, Anderson Historical Society and Museum. Facebook encourages that, and so do I. Uh, if no one's familiar, that is the acid <laughs> yeah. canal there. So, um, and then, unless you're better known by a shortened name, uh, but I would still continue to use the full name. Um, people can search for your at username now on Facebook, but pretty much that's how you search for people's names on Twitter. And pretty much almost every other channel now, um, you can find people and tag people or mention people with the at symbol. So, um, so keep note of your uh, at username on your Facebook because that's probably going to be different than your actual Facebook name. And that makes, pe it makes it searchable for people. So you can put your at username uh, on things and people can just search for it that way. You know, it's hard. Um, some of them are like Anderson Underline Museum. Some of them are underline and then some numbers and it's like how do I find this person I'm trying to tag them but I'm getting like some all kinds of weird different things and what I really want is them and so there's a specific name a specific at name and you can change that now on Facebook so if you change that people can find that a lot easier okay now is are you meaning your at as in your uh, email or just at as it similar to a hashtag uh, well, so in a way, yeah. And so what it is is here's the at. Um, people can search for Anderson Historical Society to find your page easily. You can change your at username in the page info section. That was the section that we tried to edit earlier. And so, so we, it's good to change it because if you don't change it, it can be numbers, it can be symbol, you know, it can be all kinds of things. And so when somebody searches and they're trying to, let's say you're trying to tag somebody on it, um, at Anderson. So I get a lot of different things if I put Anderson in there, but if I put Anderson Historical, see instantly it's already on top, but so is Anderson Historical Tools, Tours, Haas Historic Farms, a bunch of them. But if I continued the at username, it would only be me. Is that so, considered a vanity URL and do you change that in your settings? Yeah, you can change that in your mm -hmm. settings, but I do not, I would, I would only change it once. You know, you, you can change your name as many times as you want. I don't suggest that either. <laughs> so, I'm but, sorry, you said you can change your hat? Because I don't remember ever putting that in on my Facebook. Yeah. I'm, bringing it, I'm looking at it. And it's so automatically I'm generated. It that way. Yeah, it's generated. So, yeah. it, but mm -hmm. you can, um, and in fact, when you're first putting it in there, it actually shows what it is. But most people don't remember it. And there's, I can't remember it right it's now. It's under your settings. I can help you with it. And there's also a way to look it up, too. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, here's. 
So if I wanted to if I wanted to change my at username, I can change it right here. So under settings. Yeah, so I just click the uh, uh, on the about. I just click the pencil, mm -hmm. and that brings this up. And so there's where you can change it right there. And that way, when people tag you, you can say tag me with at Anderson Historical Museum, or whatever it is that yours is. And that's pretty that's pretty simple, but it really matters. Like all, I mean, it all matters. It all adds up. And this is the optimization part. This is the making it better. So it's really important to continue that. And I do that for my personal Facebook, too, because I have one for Michigan, where I'm from, and then one for here. Oh, yeah. So I have Michelle Rogers, Ann Arbor, Michelle Rogers, Reading. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know somebody who brands themselves um, online at, with their regular name. A mm -hmm. lot of especially social media people do. Mm -hmm. um, but they want to keep those two separate, those right. two, pri you know, one private or one separate than the other. So usually with privacy settings and changing names slightly, mm -hmm. it helps a lot. <clears throat> All right. So when you're editing your details here, you want to really look at uh, what it is that your categories are and your subcategories. Those are really important. Um, if you're a local business, you want to put local business. If you offer services, pick services. Let me show you um, real quick. I don't know why I deleted that. Okay, so I'm going to pick one of the pages here. So we'll pick, we'll just go to mine, <clears throat> and um, I'll go into my about section here and edit that. And then, so here's where you'll pick those. So if you want to say, um, let's say your bodybuilding, or okay, automotive, your body shop, you're going to pick body shop in there. You can add more of them. Um, I don't want mine to be too vague or when somebody's searching for something specifically, I want that to come up. So, um, so the, basically it's kind of like a sub-target group. If people, uh, if you're targeting, let's say, uh, paid advertisement for Facebook and you want to hit a specific target audience, these people will already be in your target audience. So it's a subcategory is very important to add. Um, but the category itself, you can really only pick a couple. It's important that you pick the right ones. That way Facebook knows how to categorize you as well. So that's kind of an important thing. Um, you want to fill out every field possible with accurate information and quality descriptions. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that say, use this section to create your links. Create, put, you know, say... Follow me on, you know, follow us also on Face, on Twitter, on Instagram, and leave links for those things. Um, you can shorten the links so that you can fit it within. If there's only a certain amount of characters in it allowed there, you can go to like a Google URL shortener or tiny URL or whatever it is that you use and shorten that so that it takes up less characters. So that way you can fit more links in there and more information into these fields. But you want to fill out every field possible. Um, I didn't fill out Impressum. Because there's no legalities here, really, necessarily, for that. Um, with Germany and France and places like that, you have to fill out the Impressum. What's an Impressum? Basically, it tells them, like, it basically, I own these accounts, this is me, and I own these accounts, and I take full responsibility and credit for these accounts. So that's basically what that is. And you don't because... Uh, because because really, we're not required to here, and I know that I own them, and... Not, not overly concerned that somebody's like, well, how do I know you own them? And plus, I manage several accounts, too, and I can't add to impress them to those accounts at all because I don't own those accounts. So I would have to give credit to whose accounts they are. <coughs> I, I just, you can, and in fact, uh, NASA, let me show you NASA's impress them because it's impressive. <laughs> so you, all of their, all of them are very good. So we go to their about here, and what they've done in their Impressum is NASM welcomes your comments to encourage, so they used it just like kind of, they basically laying out there, don't use profanity, uh, stay on topic, no personal attacks. They're saying, this is what we want to impress on you guys, that we want to make sure that you don't uh, 
So they, they're actually using it wrong, but they're using it well. So I, I wouldn't object to that at all. And in fact, I've seen other people use it just for links. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, they put links pretty much everywhere. Backlinking is something that can get you seen a little bit too. It's not worth it to me. <clears throat> I'd rather keep it up front. Everybody sees your front page. They see what you're doing. And if they go into your about description, I'd rather use that so that they'll actually stick with it and read what it is that I'm about. That's why I, that's why I keep it simple. Uh, try to keep the information and descriptions uniform amongst all platforms. So, yeah, so if you say one thing in one, it's easy enough to just cut and copy it. It's, it's easier and it keeps that continu continuity going. And it also help, continues your brand, like we were talking about. It keeps that, it's the same all across the board. So we know what this person does. Uh, look at your descriptions every few months and see if your information is still relevant to your message. When I wrote that, I checked mine, and it sure wasn't. So it was good that I followed this myself. Um, check it and read it. And, it. and maybe your wording is wrong. Maybe you'll find a typo that you didn't see before. But it's always good to update your information. And what if what you do changes slightly? Um, I want to uh, now start marketing for multi-level marketing accounts only or only for travel and tourism. So I would like to change these to reflect that and say, uh, we're taking on a new direction. We are aimed for travel and tourism. If you're a travel and tourism company, would you please follow us here, you know, or whatever. So that's the idea of checking it off, and I would definitely do that maybe every few months, every half a year. Uh, you can get ideas by looking at the way other companies in your field have worded uh, their descriptions, but don't copy. I'm pretty sure that's a link to NASA. Um, so they've done a great job filling it out. Shockingly enough, you can call that number and NASA picks up. Um, Have you tried? Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's uh, transparency. That's trust. They're building trust there. You can call them if you need to. You can email them. Uh, and you, I don't know, you, that could actually be a recording. I'm not positive. So, um, but... The founding date is the start date of NASA, October 1st, 1958. They've got their description, impress them. Long description, which is why I find that funny. They basically gave the idea of don't do that, which I thought was a good use of the impress of impress them. But their long description is shorter than their short description. And your long description is where you really want to give the most information. I think everybody knows what NASA is about, so they didn't really care too much. Their general information is pretty long, but yeah, you want to definitely fill it out. And they actually give character uh, lengths, I think, on short description and maybe even long description, but I've never found the end of it yet, so maybe. <clears throat> um, you want to post links and suggest people join you across social media channels. So here's top 52 social media platforms. That's top 52. There's probably over 100. I mean, I don't know the actual number, but there are so many different social media platforms that you can be on. And a lot of them come in and out. Some of them stick around. There's one called BB that I use that is a startup that I think is pretty good. And they, they have hives, and people are a part of your hive. And it's sort of a mix between LinkedIn and Facebook a little bit. And I like it quite a bit. But it's not really taking off, so it may just be another one of those starts that fail. I'm not sure. Um, they have... They have it in two different countries. So I, I kind of like it. I was checking it out, and I'm starting to build on it a little bit. Um, I think that what happens is people start getting involved in too many social media platforms, and they're not. What I, what I think that really should do is concentrate on the social media platforms that give you the most engagement and the most interaction. So if Twitter's working for you better than Facebook, and, but Facebook's still working for you, or you've gotten a few leads through Facebook, or people are still asking you questions on Messenger, um, then keep Facebook around. I mean, the, the Messenger, now you can actually read somebody's Messenger uh, code, and you can actually send a business a message directly through their Messenger code. And it's the easiest way for people to do that now. I mean, you can eat, literally like uh, become friends with each other just by scanning each other's phones. There's tons of different things that Messenger code is going to be good for in the future. So it's like the beginning of it. So really, they're going to have a whole bunch more things. And so you can't dismiss one thing for another. 
But if you're getting no engagement, no interaction, it's not helping you whatsoever, concentrate your efforts on something that is. It just makes more sense. So with all those media platforms, though, you do want to, you do, if, if you're going to be on three, let's say, you're going to want people to join you on all three. So just ask, like one of the best ways to do it is just ask. We'd love for you to join us on Twitter. You know, we want you to come and check us out on Facebook. There we offer more things, than, or, you know, more things about this. We're geared more for this on Twitter. Um, on our Instagram, we show you all the fun stuff. So you do want to um, let people know you're on other social media channels. And one of the best ways to do it is to leave a link and tell them to come join you over there. So that's a good way. Include social links about your, in your About section. Um, let's see. Go to my page again so I can show you that. <clears throat> and actually, so if I hover over this, you can see already that in my in my header photo, this is like basically gold. I mean, if they leave their mouse hovering over there and they'll see that and they'll go, what is that? Well, they're going to see that you have other channels there. Um, they're going to see your hashtags. And it says right on it. We lo we love for you to join us on so other social media platforms. So if I click it, there we go. So now they can just click Twitter and it takes you right to me. They can click Google Plus, it takes you right to me. Oh, see, there you go. I got a mountain. <laughs> so how do you set that up to, for the hover? Is that just it, in it just uh, yeah it does it automatically it's the comments that's in it so um, you can do that you can there's a link to my website there so you can do many things that way um, but I would definitely include links in there or a description of your company uh, with links also especially your web page the the key I guess the key to conversion is web so get them to your web page uh, the rest of it is getting them onto other social channels that they might be more active in, and so they're going to want to join you there because they'll spend more time there. I wouldn't share too many that you're not really active in. Like, I have a Pinterest and I have other things, but I really don't use them. I mean, I, get, I, I do get some engagement and some interaction in Instagram, so I use it, but not often. It's, I don't know when the last time I posted, let's put it that way. So I, I primarily use Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. So you said you put that in the section of About? And yeah. Not yeah, so the About, in the About here, uh -huh. so you, all, you have your... Um, so you add your website page. Yeah, you have that website. there. But look at, and if you go into Page Info instead of Overview, you can see I added a Twitter link as well. And how you do that is you separate them by a comma. So you put in your web page, comma, space... And make sure you put full description. You have to put the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. You have to put it all in there or else it breaks. The link breaks and then you don't have that. So you definitely want to add each of your channels in there. And that's the way you add it to your website. I mean, you, into the section of your website. So Twitter is my main. That's what I use the most. And I enjoy Twitter the most. And I get the most engagement out of it. So... That's what that's the link I want them to go to most importantly for me. <clears throat> and I covered the cover photo and profile photo description and add uh, and add apps to your tabs. So I think I'm gonna cover that in a minute, but let me do that anyway. See here's Twitter and I have Instagram feed in it. So here's my Twitter feeds going and I can see I retweeted R Michelle Rogers from Record Searchlight on optimizing social media for small business and uh, with, with this specific hashtag, 530 Media Project. That's, um, that's going to bring me to where there's pictures, you know, there's our hashtags we were talking about. Um, I don't know why that it went to there, actually. Maybe I should do it here. Yeah, there we go. So now we have much more about that. and more from other people on the 530 Media Project hashtag. So it's a pretty fantastic way leaving those links for uh, people to see other things that are going on in your social world. <clears throat> um, add social media links to your Facebook profile, contact information by putting a comma, that's what I was talking about, and here's the example. Uh, use the full URL. 
on that. Um, and how did you add that in? So you go to you go to your about. Uh-huh. Actually, I need to go to my page first because um, I need to be able to edit. So go here and highlight, hover over until you see the pencil. Mm -hmm. Click the pencil and then pick edit. You can show, managing sections makes it so you can move those up and down wherever you want them. You can put your phone number last and your web pages first. Some people do that if they have many web pages that they do. But um, so once you're in here, right. uh, where's my web page? Here it is. So I've got right here, hshastasocial.com, and then there's the comma, and then the space, okay. and then this. So if I wanted to add my Google Plus in there right now, oh, let me get to my, oh, that's my personal one. <laughs> Maybe I better not do that. Uh, let's go to my Twitter account. If I copy this, this will be the, this will just be, why isn't it Shasta Social? Okay, make sure you go to your page so that you go to your profile. That way you get the full description here. And that'll give you the full link. So it's HTTPS in this case. I put HTTP because I just typed it in and it worked, but I would definitely copy. That's the best way to do it. And so I would put a, co a comma here, a space, and then just paste this in. And there you go. So now it'll have two Twitter. I can't read the first part of what, what the section is at. Oh, okay, so when you click, when you hover over the about and you get your pencil, right. you click it, it brings you to this Edit screen or, here, and you can scroll up and down. I've scrolled down a little bit to get to the website, and you want to click this page as a website so that your websites show up on your about, and it usually will also show up on that preview plane. The about okay. overview is what it's called. And so that, I added, now I have two Twitters, I'm just going to delete that off and, or cancel that. So the good news is fill out that form and, and put his mm -hmm. email and she'll send him the whole yes yeah. whole thing. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I just didn't hit cancel. There we go. Okay. So um, here's the Twitter, the Instagram feed. Um, some companies would be better off with reviews on their featured toolbar. So if you go up here um, and you have home, about, Twitter, Instagram feed, there's more. You can have reviews, services, photos, likes, videos, and posts. So if you're a photographer, you definitely want to, you want to move photos up. You want to move reviews up. You know, if you're, it depends on what, you, what it is that you do. If you're a, video, a videographer, a VJ, or something like that, you want to move videos up, obviously. Um, but here's how you do it. You hit manage tabs, and then you'll just move them up and down or add or remove new tag. So you, you can have new, you can move these tabs up. I can move reviews up over Instagram feed, but I'd rather people see my feeds. So I'm just going to leave where it did, Where did manage tab go again? Shall we go? Uh, right, so if you click more, more. Um, <laughs> and click manage tabs. Okay. And then you can move them up and down however you want. You can take the about down too. And, and just use Twitter, Instagram, photos, and reviews or something. I mean, it, it's up to you. Uh, there is, you can look that up. There is a way, you know, there is for specific companies. You can type, how do plumbers uh, manage their tabs on Facebook? And you'll get, uh, you'll get the answer to how plumbers get, you know. So right now, I think if you hit, up on mine, I think if you hit about, and then if you, or the um, other, what is it, more, I guess? Yeah, more. You hit more, you can scroll down, and you can see TripAdvisor reviews. But I'd like yeah. to see it more prominent because I have a 5.0. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, so, so you, you'll definitely so you move that up. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, uh, good reviews are gold. So, uh, uh, you how, can, do you, how do you get reviews? Do Is there a well, place that... People can give you reviews, and you can encourage your customers to give you reviews. Um, that's, you can ask for reviews, but I wouldn't do that on social media. I would ask them directly. Um, uh, it depends, uh, too, actually. Like, if somebody makes a really nice comment and says something really great about you, 
Uh, you may ask them. I don't feel too comfortable with it. I, I, w I don't mind asking people in person, you know. And, and people that know my business or uh, know what I've done in my business, um, those people have given me reviews. So, it's, you know, even though they haven't used my services, they, they're, they're maybe in the industry, and but so they where, give me... Where would a person review something? Uh, TripAdvisor, there's a lot of them oh, out there. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah or, you know, you can do social media reviews right on there, too. You can review somebody on there. There's actually a review button. Here it is right here, reviews. And so you, people can say, excellent, this guy, we love this company. No one's done that for me. <laughs> <laughs> or thanks for doing a free workshop. At yeah, the, yeah. 530 Media Project. <laughs> so this is, um, if you go to, you can also add services. So adding services is a really good way to tell people what you charge. It, you know, it tells them up front, basically, what it is that you charge. So either they are or they aren't interested. And what's good, too, is if you have that on there and then you run a promotion and you're running a promotion, let's say I, I uh, do a, I'll, I'll post for your Facebook for a month for $150. But let's say I run a promotion for the first six months for $100. They look and say, well, he charges normally $150 for that. So it's, it's a good way to also let people know up front what you do. Fill out everything that you can, basically, is what I would strongly suggest. Um, yes? If someone puts a review up there and it's, you know, kind of nasty, can you take it down? Okay, you can take down reviews, but you have to permanently take them down. I wouldn't take down even a bad review. I would just address that review. Okay. Um, there is, if you look at uh, social, how to handle a social media crisis, it gives you a lot of good advice on how to answer things that people say. And actually, if you have, I know it kill, it, you're like, ah, oh, you just ruined my five star reviews, but if it's some crazy person and they're like, there wasn't enough jelly on my toast and you know, whatever, for a restaurant, well, everybody else is like, this restaurant's excellent, the bathrooms are clean, the people are great, I love this, I come here every Sunday, and then you've got this one person, like, wacko, and, and you answered them, I'm sorry you had a bad experience, the next time you come, just make sure you let us know, and we'll throw as much jelly on there as you need, you know, whatever. So, it's good to handle a negative, but it's also good that people see that you got that negative review, and then handled it in a positive way, too. So, yeah, two days, I mean, two days later after you've come down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. I mean, if they're vulgar... It's sometimes I'm like... Oh, I would... I would, if they're vulgar, I mean, I would delete it because you don't want people saying that. I, mean, that's you, I, I wouldn't mean, delete them. Yeah, uh, it's uh, some, yeah, something that I would leave there. If okay. it, it may be something, if you get a lot of negative reviews, it's probably something you probably should address yourself. You yeah. know, I mean, if yeah. if that's the case, um, if it's just one negative review, it just might well, be that person I mean, who's having a bad day. There's going to be some crazy people out there. Yeah. And you can say, you know, you can say, I know people have a bad days sometimes, and we, we were short-staffed that day, and we had people running in and out of the back, and people were ordering tall orders, and we had 15 tables with 20 people on them. It's kind of understandable why you didn't get them enough, their jelly to them fast enough or whatever, so. And a trip advisor, a lot of times, like for me, I always just read the bad reviews. I just want to see what people said bad. I mean, if they have a 4.5, I want to see what... Sometimes you'll, I just read the bad reviews to see, yeah. and I and I especially like I disc discard a lot of them because of what the yeah. owner responded. How right. the owner if they, did they respond professionally mm -hmm. for one? Yeah, yeah. Did or they did handle, they bad mouth did them? They, yeah, did it, you know yeah. how did they handle that? Um, was it something that was a one t a fluke, one you know one time deal? You know, uh, you know. So. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah. But so the, like with Facebook, that's the case. Um, you you. I'd probably leave that. Um, you can do what's called burying a review, and that's getting like seven of your friends to write really good reviews for you, and that buries <laughs> the review. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then you can't out. see it anymore. <laughs> I try not to do any of that, but I mean, I kn I know people that do. <laughs> so, um, so make sure to add your website to all your social media channels. If you don't have a website, I'd suggest you get one because. Your social media can bring people in and it can get business, but technically social media is, I mean, it's a way, first of all, to build trust and to be in contact with people quicker and to be able, you know, there's a lot of positives for social media, 
but where your long forms are is where you can get people to stay longest is going to probably get them to use your service. So if you have whatever it is that your service you use, just add your website to everything. Um, you can create free websites and, and then upgrade them to take off the extensions and they're cut and paste. You can do them yourself and they're actually kind of fun and that's what I use. Um, although I am currently having one built for me because I'm trading social media work for web page design. And, um, but you don't get the search engine optimization from the free web pages that you will from a made page. So it's a good idea to add it no matter what it is, even if it has the extension, because you can design that, you can get people's attention better, and you can get them to sign up for your newsletters, or you can get them to, to sign up for your services, or get a free consultation, or whatever it is that you're offering. Okay, newsletters, are you going to go over that later on or not? Uh, sure, so yeah, you, I'm not really, but I can kind of hit on it now. Um, a newsletter is typically something that you'll use for email marketing. So uh, if your company sells polyurethane skateboard wheels and people have signed up for your email because uh, they wanted to learn more about how to do a kickflip 360 on a skateboard, well, they're learning about how to do a kickflip 360, but you've got their email from that. Now you can market your wheels to them. Our wheels are superior in this way. You'll land more tricks. You'll, you know, whatever, you know, however you want to market your skateboard wheels. So it's a good idea to, uh, to get them to convert, to get them to get onto your email newsletter list. Oh, okay. There's different companies you can use for, you know, uh, the newsletters. There's, uh, was it MailChimp? There's yeah. uh, Contact. Yeah, there, there's uh, a lot of them. Contact. <coughs> uh, are, th are there pitfalls or differences? or? Yeah, there, well, there is. There's, there's a lot of differences, really. Um, I would suggest actually looking into that further than me giving you a brief description okay. on that now. Uh, do some research. MailChimp's pretty good. A lot of people use it. Um, but I, you know, what do you use, Michelle? I'm not sure what we use because I'm not in charge okay. of newsletters, but I know the Women's Fund uses constant contact, but they're yeah. not happy with it. I guess it's pretty outdated. Yeah. 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 So, but if, I mean, if you do, like, so. Email marketing services, you get a whole bunch of them. There's a reason why some of these sit at the top. They pay. So, well. <laughs> Yeah, but the, these are the ones that paid, actually the ones with ads. Um, the ones here, though, these are landing on there because of their optimization. So MailChimp looks like it's second. Second is oftentimes the best. Sometimes if you sit at number one too long, you get booted down to number two. It's a good idea to, uh, it's a good idea to try one and two to see what you like better. But MailChimp definitely comes up a lot. I think it's a good one, <laughs> myself. I actually, uh, com I actually build my own list on Excel and then just use my Gmail. <coughs> so it just depends on what you want to do. <laughs> In fact, you can just import your entire list into one. You know, it's kind of complicated. Well, that, that's what concerns me about, say, MailChimp or whatever. Can you later on pull out the contacts or do they have them and, and you can't? That's a good question. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. You know, that. you build up all these people, and then you're stuck to MailChimp. I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think you're probably able to download that. Um, more than likely, you should keep those also separate, though. I mean, uh, I get mine goes through, and it just gets added automatically to an Excel form, and then I use that Excel. I upload the Excel form, and then I actually make lists from each one of those. These people are more interested in marketing. These people are more interested in whatever so do, do you find no more credibility you know when you see constant contact you know down at the bottom or you know actually uh, without one or it's, people think so uh, I don't think so yeah, yeah people do think so um, there's there's a lot of uh, standards that people set that I actually think are kind of backwards and and I don't know if that's totally true but they say like I could I could uh, for instance be uh, Shasta social media Shasta social dot com you know or they, because people say it looks more professional whereas I would rather go with Gmail because of the functionality and the ease of conversion so I don't know I you know I guess that would be uh, another class <laughs> and, and it wouldn't be my class 
but I, I like the way the way that I'm doing it is show. actually working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll have to find someone. Yeah. Write that down so I don't forget on your your sheet. But I was going to say, in terms of what you were asking, whether they had rights to the content, um, it would probably be in their terms of service. So you just need to read their terms of service or Google it. I only know that I use paid for constant contact for a while, but I really didn't have that many people. Oh, yeah. MailChimp, yeah. I, I get it for free. Free, yeah, up to a certain so, amount. So. Um, it, I just, my constant contact email, all of that was just transferred to MailChimp. Oh, okay. So, so you were at that point, to... it wasn't an issue. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, that's helpful. Because then, I guess if you if you don't have a large email list, Mailchimp might be a way yeah. to go. So well, that's what I was thinking. And they thinking. provide templates, and they give you little. You know, they'll send you through your email. They'll market through your email as well. Um, what to you know? What templates are new? What you can use to do this or that with your emails? So it's a good it's a good thing to have something like that. But at the same time, I think you can look up all that on Google. So you know, for me, it's just as easy as a search is to answer somebody else's email. That they're going to try to upsell me on anyway. <laughs> so, I guess you get kind of jaded after you've seen thousands of them. Um, so get your badge. Now the badge with Facebook and Twitter and all those things, they're, they're specifically assigned, but the gray badge for Facebook you can get quite easily. And how you do that... What is, what's a badge? Uh, so see the little check mark that's next to the name there? That little check mark oh, okay. next to my name. Okay. That's the gray badge. There's there's the gray badge and then there's the blue badge. And the blue badge is what they give you when you're celebrity or when you're when you've got a huge following or when you're a pillar of your community or those types of things. This will actually get your page seen better. It actually moves you up in Facebook's algorithms and it helps to, for your posts to be seen, but also for your page to be discovered. So. It, you, if, in other words, if somebody doesn't have the badge, they will not maybe be in the first little search rankings when I first start typing social, or Shasta. And when I put Shasta in, I come up fairly quickly. That badge helps tremendously. <clears throat> so is that like the gold flag? Is that what that is? The what? I think I have a little gold, it looks like a little flag. Can you click on that badge or what? No, no, so that's your pinned, so that just means you pinned that to the top. Oh, okay. So That'll be the so thing that you... I don't see a badge at all. I'm gonna, I'm no, gonna so you don't have one. Okay. Yeah. So you so you want to get that because it's easy. All you have to do is verify your page. And, and when you verify your page, um, what happens is uh, they, they'll either verify it with a phone number, they'll either call you and give you a, a code to put in, or they will say you have to prove who you are. I actually had to prove who I was, cause I, probably because I've changed my number a couple times. But um, So what I did was I just put my business license down. I put my ID on there. I took a picture of it and sent it to them. Mm -hmm. And they, I had the verification badge the next day. So, And a lot of companies in... in so uh, how do I go about doing that? So, okay. So. Oh yeah, so it's settings. Yeah, settings. And then right here it says page is verified, but yours won't. Yours will say verify page. So you'll click that and then it'll say verify page with a phone number probably first and then you'll click that. And then if it won't let you verify it by the phone number, then you'll have to do it the way I was talking about. Okay. Um, but otherwise it will just call you and it's been a while, so I can't recall whether they gave me a code or if they uh, actually just verified it. But I, I've verified all except one of the accounts that I have. Uh, oh, no, well, actually, I got two new accounts, so all but three. <laughs> so Because I haven't spent enough time on those accounts yet. But um, but that's the, that's the key to getting it. And it, when you get it, it'll actually say... Great, you've got your badge. Now you will be uh, your post will be seen sooner, and your page will be more readily seen by others. So, something to that effect. If you have to send them the picture, where are you sending it? Uh, yeah, um, actually, so I up. I think I had to upload it. It says upload your okay. photo, so and you can send it as a JPEG or a you know I forget what, what the options were. But yeah, it's been a while since I've done that, so. 
but yeah, verify that page. Um, and then with this one, Google Plus, that one is the code verification that gives you the badge. So that, you know, it also adds trust too because people know that you're a company, that you have credentials, and that you actually have a business license or a business, you know, so that you're act they know this is a real business that I'm talking to because they have that. And, it's, and see, here's the badge for um, Google Plus. And so it's a little shield with a check mark in it. The other one's a circle with a check mark in it. With Twitter, it's not going to happen really, um, unless I, there. Okay, so there is, <laughs> there is one. Let me show you the. It's kind of funny. Um, don't fall for any of those Twitter accounts that say like this is a Twitter verification account or anything. There's actually only one account. So Twitter verifies accounts on an ongoing basis to make it easier for users to find who they're looking for. Um, we concentrate highly on sought users in music, in music, acting, fashion, government, politics, religion, journalism. Um, Lava Beds National Monument just got theirs. Um, Lassen's had theirs for a while. Uh, Plumas County has one, but Shasta does. I, did, I don't understand why not some and some did. Maybe Plumas was on there earlier and had a more professional page earlier on, so they gave them their verification badge before they just started handing them out to everybody. I don't know. But they stopped handing them out um, quite a bit. I mean, not they're still adding them at a constant rate, but they're, they're, uh, they don't give them to you easily. Let's put it that way. So this is the actual verified accounts page for Twitter. Um, it has a blue check mark on it. That's how you know all the other ones usually have numbers next to them or a bunch of nonsense. And it's at verified. But what um, HubSpot suggests is to make um, a post that says, post, send your post to them and say, hey, I have a business license and I have an ID uh, that matches my, I forget exactly how they word it, that matches my um, business license. How do I get a verification? And then you wait for them to answer you, and when they answer you, they send you a link, and you follow that link, and then you can get verified. I've sent that, and I haven't got a response, so I'm not sure how effective that is. Not sure if it's going to work at all, but I'm willing to try it. Plus, there's not too many people in this area that do have those verifications, so it does lend credibility for sure, if you can get it. Um, with Pinterest... This is the way that you do it. I have not done it, so I did not do this yet. But this is how you request a verified badge on Pinterest. Oh, apparently there's one for Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest on here too. So, oh yeah. I wonder if they say the same thing about the Twitter account. Yeah, this just says to, uh, just to display your Twitter account on your website and place a link in your Twitter profile for your site. I don't think that's very effective, but you may not be able to get one if you don't do that. So I already do that automatically because I want people to go to my Twitter account or to my webpage. So I will, you know, I always do that both ways. Um, Instagram is still working on a resolution for verification for people. They have verified a ton of people, but they're still pretty much only doing celebrities and stars and stuff like that. They really have not figured out a system yet, and that's since 2014. So it may be a while before people can get one on Instagram at all. So it is time for questions, <laughs> or if you want some hands-on help with your pages, or if there's something that I can do for you, um, or if you have any specific questions, uh, I will take them now. Yes? Can you just kind of go over how to uh, look at your page? What now? Like, how do, you, how do you read your page? It says reach so many people mm -hmm. and all that. I'm so confused. Oh, okay, for the analytics on it? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> So Twitter also has analytics on it. Um, let's see. I don't remember where. Is it Facebook or Twitter you're looking for? Facebook. So you go to Insights. Okay, let's, yeah. Yeah, let's do Facebook. Although, for some reason, I don't see the Twitter button. I've done it many times. You just type in Twitter um, analytics. Forward slash analytics? Yeah. Twitter.analytics.com. 
So here is my Facebook page. These are going to look very bad, but that's okay. Here's the insights for it. Um, so, okay, so the action's on page. I don't have any, nobody clicked the action button. Nobody clicked my button at all. Um, so on reach, I'm down uh, 90 people. I mean, 38% and 90 people is who I reached. So when I make a post, that'll go out to a certain amount of people and however many people saw that post, that's your reach. Um, it's not necessarily how many people liked it or, or reacted to it or, or made a comment on it, but it's the actual amount of people that saw it. Um, with post engagement, now that's people that did engage with the post. Um, page views, that's how many people actually just looked at your page. Okay. So if, if somebody... If somebody just comes to my page and one person looked at it, thanks, Michelle. <laughs> um, it basically, that, that's what shows who came and looked at your page, liked your page, and page views. I had like five people that looked at it um, since in this last week. Um, the last 28 days aren't going to be much better. Let me give you a good example, though, because then actually you can when see you some. When you say look at it, does that mean it popped up in their news feed, or does that mean they actually? It means they it actually went to your page to take a look at it. And they looked at certain stuff on it, or. Yeah, they they can scroll around on it or anything. The fact that they went to the page that and it means. It wouldn't be me a hundred times looking at it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> somebody else. It, it could be somebody. It has to be somebody else. Yeah. And in fact, it won't show up if you look at your own page. <laughs> but, okay. but it will on your web page, though. <laughs> you got you to separate them. Okay. Uh, and I forget which one it was. Uh, I was working on it, building it. And then a couple months later, you know, it dropped down. And I think it, it, it had to have been counting me. Going no, in. not likely. It's very likely that it was other people and maybe there was some kind of thing that you did that spiked interest or peaked interest or so or it doesn't count you when you're working on it or no. going into it no okay no. so you can see like the total actions on this page is two um, page likes 115 in a week um, 210 page views the reach on this one was 50,000 like the half half of the population of reading basically um, I re was able to reach, and post engagement was the size of Anderson, basically. Um, so that was that's how many people actually engaged on my page. Um, the last 28 days will show you a lot more. Um, I had a total of six. And what's neat is you can click on these individually. Let's say I wanted to find out exactly when those people pay clicked on it, or when those people clicked my button. Um, it'll say. People who clicked by age, gender, by country, you can get very analytical if you want to. There's a lot of data here. There's other companies like SEM Rush and different ones that will actually make it much easier to read. Put them in pie charts or bar graphs and you can see which days they were in. And if it was women or men that liked your page more or whatever it was. Um, you can do specifically the likes. But when you look at an overview, and you pick the 28 days, it basically shows you, I wish it would do 31 days even if there's not that many in the month. You know, sometimes I, like my last couple of posts were the best, <laughs> and I'm trying to report my, you know, findings. So I run them in 28 day cycles, and then you'll lose days at the, you know, by the end of the year, you'll lose a couple of days. So you're no longer on target for giving them monthly reports. So that's why I like SEM Rush and different ones like that because it also shows me who go, who's gone to the web page and why. Did they come from Twitter? Did they come from, you know, Instagram? Did, did, where did they come from? So it's always a good idea. So what's the difference between page views then and um, reach? Page views or and reach. The, yeah. So page views are people who actually physically came to your page, mm -hmm. um, and then something else up here and then reach is however many people that you reached with your post so um, let's so if I make a post that's shared once it goes up in the in in Google's search engine <laughs> basically it'll go like this so this guy likes it so two more people might see it so if if this if nobody likes it or no interaction happens on that post that you've made you might only see 14 people saw it 28 people saw it or sometimes I'll share a link or a picture that I've previously shared, and I notice my reach is lower. 
there's also going to be other issues like the the reach is definitely going to lo go lower once they change the the way that people will see more of their friends and family in Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg's doing that. He he feels like he made Facebook for the college thing, but it's face to face, and he really wants it to be more about family and friends than business. So on people's personal pages, that's going to be more of what you see. You see less business. So you'll see those numbers drop too. Um, but there's always going to be a response. There's always going to be a way to get more people to see those things. And believe it or not, like a really low budget, if you on a really low budget, you can have tons more people see your posts. If you sp if you t pick target audiences and um, and you boost your posts and you pick interests for that, those more people will see that. And you can actually change it until you have it right, where you can see it'll say like fifteen. 1,500 to 2,000 people will see this. And then it'll say like 1,500 to 1,800 people will see this. And then you're like, oh, that's the wrong direction. So you add different things in there. And then they will, it will continually, if you add more money, obviously more people are going to see it. But I've, I've actually spent like $10 and got the same results as 20 because of bad choices. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, and yeah. I would read about those. <laughs> you know, those will help. Yeah. I mean, yes. So. A couple of weeks ago, we had a new grandson, and we posted a picture of him, and we got the most reach or engagement or whatever than we ever had. Now, is that because I've heard that if you just stick to constantly pushing your business versus a family, I'm a normal person kind of Well, it adds humanity to it, and everybody loves a cute grandkid. Um, I think, yeah, that's kind of yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and there is a way to mar you know there is a way that people use uh, cute things and people to market as well. So it's not a bad choice. Um, I'd be careful how much personal you know your Facebook personal page and your Facebook business page should definitely be separate. And I'd rather leave a whole bunch of links about my business and things like that so that people will eventually go. And if they're into what you're into, if they're into social media marketing, or if they're and they read my pages, they might not go through and like everything that they read, but they may read everything and say, you know what, I could use some consultation time. I, I, I have, I'm great at this, maybe even better than this guy. I'm better than this guy at all these things, but this is one thing I noticed this guy concentrates a lot on and he seems to have a good knowledge of it. So maybe they'll hire me for a six-hour session. Or maybe their company is hiring a new person in social media and they've done great work in travel and tourism, but they're now all of a sudden they're having to take on a plumbing. How do you market plumbing? I mean, it makes it difficult. So, so um, I, I'm kind of across the board that way. I was really hoping to stick with travel and tourism, but did start taking accounts that were outside of that, and I had to learn. It seemed like I didn't know anything all of a sudden. So that's the, that's a, you know, you can, but you can definitely get more engagement, more people will like it, and actually it will probably help your page. You might even get more likes if you use stuff like that sometimes uh, cautiously. I'm sorry. Facebook won't, they don't watch that or monitor that, and they'll, somebody told me that if you did add more personal things, it'll appear more than if you just constantly stick with pushing your business. I don't, I don't know that that's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay, another question uh, I had is content, and I've been getting these, uh, I forget which, where it was, uh, a content, uh, content, content manager or a person that you can go to, say this is my business, okay, and this is what I'm trying to get over. Yeah, uh, right. You know, content is king in social media, so that and, makes and so sense. So, are there where do you find people like that, or how do you? And is it expensive? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You have my card. Um, but no, but also too though. I mean, you know, so I, so if let's say you are a travel or tourism place, let's say you're promoting Lassen, um, it's a good idea to if if it's your account and you're the one making the money from it and it's your campground, let's say, and you want to uh, get people there and you want to really highlight the campground and how beautiful it is and stuff, it's a good idea to hire a photographer too. It's, I mean, it's always a good idea to get professional things. 
I go out with my cell phone camera and then I hit auto adjust on my big monkey and I get the best picture I can from my little junky camera. Okay, but I'm talking text versus... Yeah, right. You know, I don't have a problem with the photos. No, I know. That's why <laughs> okay, I used it the, as a reverse the, yeah, example. Uh-huh, the, uh -huh, the, the text. But yeah. The text is where... Actually, I've been thinking quite seriously about hiring a writer to yeah, uh, fix my webpage. Right. Uh, it, it's... There's a talent, and you can tell by sometimes you read people's yes. yeah. work, and you just go, "Wow." Yeah, and um, and there's uh, there's also a time when you just give it all up to somebody. If if you, you know, it, for instance, a, a company manager that's too busy to be able to do his own social media work, or he's too busy building his business, and he just doesn't have time for that. He, that's a good option for somebody to hire a social media manager. Um, but if it was just about content and you just wanted ideas, a lot of times you can just search the market that you're in and look at what they've been doing. Find the ones with the most likes, the ones with the most followers, see what they've done. See how much of theirs is paid versus how much of it's organic. And then if you see that they have a lot of organic likes and their stuff shared a lot, probably they're doing it right. So it's probably a good idea. You know, you don't have to... You don't have to steal their ideas, and it would be horrible, let's say, if somebody in plumbing made a post today that was awesome, and I took basically their words but changed them to my own and put a similar picture. They'd be like, oh, this guy, you know. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to steal ideas necessarily, but you do want to gain ideas from other people in your industry that are doing well with it. So that's, that's a good way to build your own content. Um, but, yes, you can always... Uh, you know, a creative writer is awesome. They can sometimes give you, like, make things. I didn't have any creativity. Mine was all facts and numbers. And what I really like is, like, field guides. And I don't read novels. But somebody who can put it into a way that, you know, this guy, he was like, when you hear the bird, he starts his blog off about birds chirping and things. And I'm going like, whoa. And I was in it. I was hooked. You know, I read it. And I was like, how, how, how do you blend all this together and stuff? And now after you know, reading all those things, I look at my own blog and I go, that's t terribly uptight. You know, my blog's like, eh, you know, here's the facts about hashtags. Well, the great guidelines is what I got. The, my comment was great guidelines. Well, guidelines is what I was going for. I was hoping that, and here's how I should have worded it. People aren't using hashtags right. They're overusing hashtags. They're using hashtags all through their posts. I mean, most of their post in Twitter is hashtags or something. And really, you can't, and why not that word? Why did you leave that word unhashtag if you hashtag all these other words that don't make sense? So, so I, that's what I was really trying to convey. But I, I didn't do that. What do I really know, conveyed was a set of guidelines. Of, uh, in the area, are there any content, you know, writers or ghost writers or that I don't how, know. How, do you, how do you find that? Um, I Google search it. That's what I would do. Um, I, I don't know, honestly. And actually, yeah. <laughs> and actually, I, I don't, now I think after practice, I think after a period of time, you get better and better at it too, and you start noting your audience, and you start noticing what they do and don't like. I've noticed with uh, travel, for instance, that it's just big, beautiful pictures and, and something of quality content in there. If you teach them about something, or if you uh, give them examples of something, that's, you know, that's going to give them something, like that's a gem to them. So they'll like that. They'll like not only get their, the picture draws them in. 78%, I think, I'm pretty sure that's the number, 78% uh, more likes on, on posts with pictures than without. So yeah, it's, <coughs> like it's a big deal to actually get that in, in front of people. There's also a site called Fiverr where you can hire content um, producers. It's F-I-V-R. So they'll produce video for you, a blog post, um, whatever it may be, and I think it starts at five dollars. So um, you can check that site out for more details. F I V R. I think it's just F I V R. Yeah. I don't so, see it, but it's there. I'm sure. Try F I V E R then. I thought it was just with an R, but maybe not. Yeah. Um, no. I don't know. Is there somewhere? Yeah, our last um, presentation we had information on it. Yeah, and also too, I, there's also sentence restructurers online. Um, if you don't like the way that you've worded a sentence, or if you can't figure it, 
or use a thesaurus, that helps a lot too. Sometimes I, I can't find a word or I don't want to use the same word, but I, you know, it sounds too similar to something I posted in the past. I can use a thesaurus or there's a lot of ways to get a little creative too. I, what I do, I, sometimes even I'll actually, to make a post, um, let's say it's about a specific campground, I'll read like five different people's uh, reviews of the campground. I'll read five blog posts about the campground. And then I'll get it all in my head, and then I will write what it is that I feel like I've learned from it all. On there. And that helps a lot, too. So when you edit a post, like let's say I misspell, I missed it, and I edit it, and edit it, and edit it. Yeah. Is that kind of going to be constantly going to people's news feed, or do they just get the post at one time? Uh, they'll get the post, but if you make an edit, it'll be edited in front of them. So if they see it later after you've edited it, it will be different to them. Um, but there will be edit history, um, and so I like to make two or three edits <laughs> so they don't see my first mistake if it was horrible. Uh, sometimes you can, sometimes in fact, you, you know, you're like, oh, I can't believe I posted that and you want to delete it or yeah. edit it fast, can't do it fast enough. Somebody screenshots it and shoots it, you know. People are mean. <laughs> okay. So, can you put on the last slide and I'll just go over some of the upcoming presentations? All right. Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming. And um, We have some upcoming workshops. If you haven't seen this on the Meetup site yet, we have Google Slides. Um, that's very similar to PowerPoint, but it can be shared. It's shared in the cloud, and you can collaborate with someone on slides from anywhere. It's also accessible on your mobile devices. Excel Basics, um, our editor, Silas Lyons, will be teaching that. Um, Instagram, I'll be leading that workshop. Uh, Google Drive for collaboration, so that will cover... Again, slides, but also polls and spreadsheets and um, documents. And then Rebel Mouse, which is a curation site. So you can, cur you can curate social media and RSS feeds, and you can embed that in your blog. So let's say you're um, a financial advisor, and you want to curate any news that has to do with the financial market. You can create a Rebel Mouse page that will do that automatically, and then you can embed that on your website or blog. So that's what that's all about, and those are our upcoming workshops. So, thanks so for coming. Should we exchange business cards? If you want to. You mean at the class? Right. Okay. I've never done that, but go for it. Yeah. 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 Well, you guys should have sure. business cards, right? Um, are we collecting Yes, I'm collecting those. So, if you, yeah, if you take the time to fill that out, I appreciate it. So, Google Slides isn't. Um, I went to some.